What's up guys, got another one for you. So I've been trying to find this for a little while now. And um, yes, it's Melancholia playing as Ethiopia. Going up though against uh, uh, Consensus is gay. Um, I don't know if Consensus is gay. Uh, you know, that's that's up to him or not. I don't <laughs> but this is Opti and of course, I. I, I have no word because this guy is just weird. <laughs> so I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe consensus told him. Maybe maybe he's trying to be offensive. Who knows? But anyways, um, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good one because the reason I particularly wanted to find this game and uh, it took me a couple of games to find it. Um, I did play against Melancholia. I played against Melancholia a couple of times, but I I got beat by this. Okay, I hold my arms up. Right, I got beat by this, and I I flipped anyone who <laughs> watched me play that game i think it was a couple of weeks ago now i was like how can how can this rush exist how can how can this this ethiopia lane exist and how has this not been patched i'm not gonna spoil it for you but uh hopefully we see the right so hopefully we see it right because ethiopia has always been one of those civilizations under the radar um, and and that's because they're not very played very much, and they're not they're not played particularly at high levels very much. I'm really only seeing Melancholia, who's who's over 2k elo now, who's over 2k elo, and prior to playing Ethiopia was probably an 18 1700 elo player, uh, and and that's really it. You know, there's not many other top level players playing the civilization right now, and I don't know why, because in my opinion, it's an STSIV. 100% is an STSIV. Um, so we'll see, maybe we'll start to see more, but you'll see why, you will see why in the next few minutes, why this sieve is so crazy, okay? So let's go have a quick look, see what's going on. Uh, Melancholia over here, let's have a look at the decks. Uh, a fantastic map, by the way, for Africa, because obviously they get to scout and they get livestock, and obviously the more livestock they get, the more eco they have. A little bit of a treasure contest going over here for 50, only for 50 food, that's fine. Uh, the Abin has just been sent now, so Abin will be able to come over and heal the Explorer. Let's have a quick look, see if we're going to see anything crazy here. Melancholia obviously wants it. Oh, it's going to be close. I think Melancholia gets it. Yeah. And he's going to be able to run away scot-free. There we go. So what do we see at the moment? We see a 15 villager age up. So we see the classic granary go down and get that early hunting dogs. And a house. And that's really that's really all we're seeing. Uh, we'll see if probably... Okay, Hardened Axe coming in now. Um, maybe... Oh, nice. A uh, couple of livestock got pinched there. Melancholia, though, not paying attention. And loses one. Wow, that's unfortunate. Just goes and kills it as well. Very, very smart. So the Abin is around. Uh, let's have a quick look at Melancholia's deck. So there's the Tuville, one Abin. Uh, anything else? We've got the Big Benny. No doubt we'll see that in action. We've got those seven Abbas guns, which did, which did get nerfed a couple of patches ago. So I believe it gave eight last time. So now it gets it gives seven or so. But still, it is a pseudo. It's essentially a pseudo Abbas gun. It's not quite as good as an Abbas gunner, um, but it's essentially the same sort of thing. It's just a knockoff version. Right? It's like the Audi version of Abbas guns, uh, or for you Americans out there, the Walmart version, the Target version of Abbas guns. Um, so keep an eye on Melancholia here. We, I think we know what to expect from Osteo. Let's have a look at his deck. Yeah, very fast fortress. Lands super fast. So he's going to be going straight up for a fast fortress, no doubt. Uh, Melancholia, on the other hand, we want to keep an eye on what's going on here. He's building a mountain monastery. Uh, hasn't bought any, any wood yet, I don't think. He's literally saving all his livestock for as long as possible because the longer you save the livestock, the higher the value it gives. So you'll see here, value is currently almost at ninety-four percent. So once that gets to one hundred percent, that's when you want to. That's when you want to hit that. Hit that mark. So age is up with the Sudanese, and this is so. This is the classic. We're gonna get the rush here, boys. We are gonna get the rush. So age is up right, with a native embassy builder because of the Sudanese. Okay, and uh, it's gonna give him three hundred influence, and that influence is gonna pay for this tech right here, Sudanese Red Sea Trade wagons. Okay, you see this. This is the Sudanese native tech. That gives two sea red sea wagons. Okay, you can get this from the mountain monastery if you age it with Sudanese. And look at this infrastructure right now. Yes, we are essentially seeing a triple racks 
at five minutes in the game. Another mountain monastery going down. Look at all this infrastructure. At five minutes, look at all this infrastructure. Double racks. These are war camps, by the way. These are no ordinary barracks, okay? These war camps are 250 wood, and they essentially are a stable and a barracks all in one. That's already insane value for Ethiopia to have that as the kind of the automatic norm, right? That that's what their norm is. But to have it as a Red Sea Wagon bonus as well, it can cut this down. It's basically 500 wood for a tech that costs, what, 300 or so um, uh, influence, maybe 400 influence. And you get that for free upon aging up. So, yeah, it's kind of insane. So you see there, Big Benny came in as well. Uh, Big Benny has been used, I believe, to get a load of wood. So he instantly sold it for a load of wood. And that's going to pay for all of these. It's going to pay for all of these guest Kenyans right now. Been picking up um, golden stirrups, which increases cavalry speed by five percent. Interesting. Uh, basically, just going to be giving them a load of, um, giving them a load of XP here, that like twenty-four XP, which is nice. Using that chaos, I believe. So we, saw, I talk, you say, well, he's not really triple raxing, is he? Well, yeah, he kind of is. And do you know why it works so well? Because Ethiopia get a hidden resource like what most civs don't, which is this uh, influence here. And because of that, this third barracks here, which is the native embassy, is essentially free just to mix in Sudanese Dervish, which is essentially like a really good crossbow unit. Um, so to mix that in with double racks guest Kenya, which is already a top tier musketeer, it's so insane. You can probably tell from my voice that, you know, I'm very bitter because I got beat by this. <laughs> I got beat by it once, okay? Never again. However, look at this. Again, there's another batch of six with another free dervish coming in. Already has 14. You know, going 700 influence behind this. And guess what's going to come off the back of that 700 influence? Bang. On top of all of this, he's going to be able to ship cannoneer mercenaries. Watch this space, I guarantee you. And oh, look. He's just run out of wood. So what's he going to do? He's going to build a load of cab. He's going to build a load of shotter warriors. Boom. Three gallons does come in, though, with Minutemen and with um, some regulars. But is it going to matter? Is it going to matter? All gallons be able to get behind this White House. That is a really nice. That should be a cleanup. osteo has got some good micro here, which he does. These Minutemen are putting them work as well. But look. Oh, my goodness me. The shotter warriors. Just eight shotter warriors at 7 minutes 50 with a 21 villager eco. He's able to mass this amount of stuff. It's just not fair, is it? It's just not fair. Again, double racks. He's able to get those extra amount of units. Look, we can see in another eight gas Kenya. No, another nine gas Kenya coming in. He's got 21 villager eco and he is shipping those cannoneers behind this. It's just one thing after another. And this this rush is just so, like, the tempo never ends. It's like you would think that with his eco, with only 21 villager eco, it would be relatively low. But no, because of the big bennies, because of the livestock, look at the livestock value right now. He's able to get 450 wood or 400 gold at the drop of a hat. At the drop of a hat. That's half of an age two shipment. And he could go bang, bang. And that's basically an H2 shipment resource in his, in, his, in his bank. Boom, just like that. Just another eight. Just another eight coming in. And you think normal normal sieves would have one racks right now. And it would be pumping five at a time. But he's able to just get that extra amount out. All because of those Red Sea wagons. Essentially, essentially a because of a free resource. Look, more dervish coming in. Not on top of on top of these Abbas guns coming in. It's just so brutal. Let's have a quick look at what USA is sending. He shipped the Gatling gun card again. So now it's going to give him two. If he ships it again, it'll give him one. Personally, uh, I like shipping the Napoleon guns, the French Canadians. Um, once you've shipped Gatlings once. I feel like having two Napoleon guns is, is way better than having two Gatling guns. But that's just me personally. So again, look look at this mass. You know, not only did he destroy his, his tempo with the three Gatlings at the beginning with all that Minutemen. He's, look at this remass coming in. 
Look at this remas coming in. He's got 10 cab. He's got 17 or so shuttles. And then he's got seven Abbas guns. The Gatlings are going to get wrecked. Even with Melancholy's micro, which is more than questionable, is still able to still able to just do this. Again, now six shotter warriors is the next shipment, and he's gaining so much XP from all of this because of all the fighting and how many units he's making. It's giving so much XP. There's no TPs right now. There's no extra eco anywhere. It's literally just pure livestock and and Abon. And yeah, just mountain monasteries planted everywhere because of all the free wood that he gets from the livestock and uh, not to mention that on this map look six yaks right now it's, it's just insane being able to give this amount of resources just everyone on food that's all he needs to do just everyone on food livestock provides the rest and it's just utterly brutal and uh yeah, this is, you know, Osteo is a, a top player right now. And the, the the Fast Fortress from USA, you know, the really Fast Fortress is supposed to be almost any rush, any H2 rush because of those Gatlings, because of those early Gatlings. Unless you're Russia, um, I think it beats out pretty much any rush other than Russia's or maybe Otto's. And yeah, it's just so brutal. It's just so brutal. He does actually have Napoleon guns in now as well. So decided to go for, and and look, he, you know, o Osteo isn't able to go for the eco cards that he wants to. He's not able to get the Russia blockhouses. He's not able to get the 1K wood. He's just forced. And this is what this this huge rush by Ethiopia is able to do. It's able to control what shipments he sends. And he's going to constantly force him to ship military units. And he doesn't want to do that. He wants to ship eco. And Melancholy is only on 28 villages. But look at this remass. Remass after remass after remass. Devs, if you are watching, <laughs> if there was ever something that needed to be nerfed, I beg, look at this remass. It's 12 minutes, and he's had, like, this is, like, his third huge rematch. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. 16 cab, 28 musks, still has six cannoneers, but because of the Avon, they've all been able to be healed. He's got four dervish behind all of this as well. And the French-Canadian, sorry, the Napoleon guns, trying to do some damage more minimum coming in but he's just taking pot shots for fun but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter in comes the drag box look at this micro all over the place <laughs> 1500 elo right here micro for you but it doesn't matter it's still going to be enough <laughs> even the villager pool trying their hardest Oh my, even the Abum getting some swings in there. Go on, lad. Whacking them with that ancient staff there. RuneScape joke there. Any, any of my boys, any RuneScape players out there, the ancient staff. And look, GG is cool. I mean, I have no words. I have no words. Guys, I'm trying to not be biased. I know it might come across this, but... Tell me in the comment section if you think this is way too OP because I certainly do. But hey, I'm just a trash content creator, so what would I know? <laughs> Let's have a quick look at the stats, the scores, and the doors. I mean, look at this resource. I mean, uh, that's to that's to be ex expected. But look how he's just forced, constantly forcing. Osteo, never giving him a, a, a breather to try and get his eco pumping. And you see all these divots in here, and they're all the livestock livestock buys that you see that big one there. That was the big Benny uh, cow card. Look at the military unit population. And he's got a nice at seven minutes 30, 27. Then he look, he drops down to three, and all of a sudden, from eight minutes to nine and a half minutes, he's up to 36. And then he loses a load again and goes from 20 or 22 again, all the way back up to 62. Huge remasses with very, very strong units. Gas Kenya, for anyone who doesn't know, they fire faster 
the closer they are to an opponent. So you see here, rather than the standard three, the closer they are, they've got 2.71 there. You've got 2.96 here. He's got a 2.68. So I think it goes up to 2.5, depending on how close. He's got cannoneers. I don't even know if these show up in the population space, but um, extremely good. Shotter Warriors, very, very efficient cavalry type unit. Yeah, wow. And now now imagine someone with, you know, 2K ELO micro on top of this. It's a, it's a very, very scary build. But guys, I want to showcase that build because it's a very scary build that's uh, only only really Melancola is, uh, is using at the moment on the ladder. Um, so if any of you guys are out there, 1200, 1K ELO players out there, I would highly suggest and recommend you try this build out. Very simple build, but very, very strong rush. Guys, hope you enjoyed that one, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.